If you have your Bibles, get your Bibles. We're going to start. It's going to be great. Put your hands on your Bible. Father, thank you. Thank you as we go into your word, that your word is our life, that your word is our everything. Holy Spirit, uh, you inspired men of old to write these words. So let these words become alive to us today, Father. Let it find entrance into our lives. Let your life become our life. And let us walk in your light. Father, let men see our lives and testify of your good works. And as we are in the beginning of this year, I just want to speak a blessing over this year, over every one of us. Father, let your word be our guide in everything that we do. Let your wisdom and knowledge, Father, lead us in all ways. Holy Spirit, thank you that you will be our guide in this year. That everything we do, Father, will be successful because your blessing is upon us. That your word has been settled in the heavens and it says, in blessing I will bless you. Father, in multiplying I will multiply and I release that word over this year for every one of us. So that every place we put our foot, Father, people will see your goodness. Everything we touch, Father, will be successful because you have blessed us. And I just bless this year and so I bless everyone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your word. Amen. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Before I get into the word, I just want to let you know, uh, the end of January, we have our miracle service. So make your plans, be here. It's going to be lacquer. It's going to be fun. It's going to be joyous. And if you know sick people, man, bring them. I know that there is healing that's going to take place this year that you have never seen before. I believe that there are things stored up for you that you have never seen before. Never heard of before, never understood before, that God is going to reveal these things in these times. Man, if you are alive in 2022, it means God has a plan for you through everything that is going on. <laughs> and uh, I'm not going to live this year according to the government's plans. I'm not going to budge according to what they say we can and cannot do. Last year, we stood up and we said the church remains open. So I want to encourage you, go into this year and do what you feel you need to do. And don't be intimidated by a worldly system and by worldly governments. Don't sacrifice what you need to do in order to please men. God has given you a vision. He has given you a dream. And it's time to fulfill those things. So... If we're going to start off today, let's go to Proverbs 24. Hallelujah. Are you in Proverbs? I'm not in Proverbs. I'm on my way there. Proverbs 24. And let's start in verse 3. Do you have your Bible with you? It says, through what? Through wisdom, a house is builded, and by understanding, it is established. Love the King Amplified. It says, through skillful and godly wisdom is a house, a life, a home, and a family built. And by understanding, it is established on a sound and good foundation. Oh, verse 4, it says, and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. Wow. Let's stop there for a second. It says, By knowledge shall its chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. I don't know about you, but I love a house that's full of pleasant riches. Hey, that sounds good, I just say. Eh? Imagine just opening up the door. It's just pleasant. Everything you see is just is there. Everything you need is just there. Everything you desire is just there. How many of you have a house like that? Not one. One, two. Wow, I'm coming to visit you today. Just imagine you walk into a house and everything you need, everything you desire. Come on, let's just put it in simple terms. If you open up your bank app today and you have everything that you need in order to fulfill your work, wouldn't that be great? How are you going to get there? Oh, jump back. Through skillful and godly wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. And verse 5, it says, A wise man is strong and is better than a strong man, 
and a man of knowledge increases and strengthens his power. So, repeat after me. I have all wisdom and knowledge in Christ Jesus. Look, we've been through this over and over. I'm just thinking about this year. Is what, is, what is the word? Every time we want a word of the year, we want a prophecy. We want direction, right? All right. Yes. That's why everyone wants to come over to the, the crossing over service. Everyone wants a vision of where they're going to get. And at the end of the year, they want another vision for the next year. But yet God has given to everyone all that they need in order to be successful, in order to see where they need to go. So for me, for this year, I feel it's time for the church to be what they're supposed to be. Not come to the church to be satisfied for another week. We come to the church to glorify Him, to praise Him, to honor Him. But when we go out, we need to be a light to this world. <laughs> All right, so the first part is the place that I'm sitting at here. It is the desk. What is a desk about? If we are in school, is to get a hiding on. If we get older, for me, a desk is almost like your brain. It's like your computer. It's your workspace. It is a place of vision. It is a place of direction. It is a place of calculation. It is the place where your mind has to roam free and develop new things. So, let's go to the beginning. Habakkuk 2. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Ooh, they do get bigger, brother. Don't worry. Habakkuk 2 verse 2, it says, I will stand up my watch and set upon my tower, and I will watch to see what it will say unto me, and what I will answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but in the end it shall speak and not lie. Though we tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that reads it. First of all, you have to have a place of vision. You have to have your place of vision, your place of planning. See, if you don't have a vision, you can't be upset if your life is going nowhere. If you don't make the time and get this table in your life where you can sit and plot down things, write down things when God speaks to you, write down the ideas, when you have a plan, you need to have a pencil, you need to have a piece of paper, you need to write down the vision. So what is this year about? I think this year is about visions being fulfilled. Because if I look at the body of Christ, there is no lack of vision. There is no lack of word. There is no lack of prophecies. If I look at you guys today, I see a lot of words not being fulfilled yet. But I see people believing in it. I see there are things that you are waiting for, but it has not yet manifested. And this is what this year is about for me. It is about that fulfilling because you have already received all that you need in order to be successful. You have received all the words, all the prophecies in order for your life to go forward. But do we see these things? Not yet. Are we going to see them? Thank you, Sabisa. Why it says, ha, write down the vision because it will not tarry. Write it down. Firstly, there's a place of vision. There's a place of planning. There is a place of calculating. Let's go to Luke 14. All right, let's read from verse 25, and this is a quite an interesting piece. It says, And there went a great multitude with him, and he turned and said unto them, If any man comes to me, and hate not his father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, you and his own life also, he cannot be my disciple. And whatsoever does not bear his cross and come after me cannot be my disciple. All right, should we stop there and reflect a bit? How many of you love your father? 
That's a rough one, okay. Verse 28. <laughs> For which of you, intending to build a tower, sits not down first and counts the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it? Lest happily after he has laid the foundation and he is not able to finish it, all that beheld it began to mock him, saying, This man began to build and was not able to finish. Or what king goes to a war with another king, sits down first and does not consult whether he is able with 10,000 to meet him that comes against him with 20,000? Or else while the other is yet a great way off, he sends an um, ambassador and desireth conditions of peace. So likewise, whosoever he be of you that forsake not all that he has, he cannot be my disciple. Salt is good, but if the salt has lost his savor, Wherewith shall it be seasoned? It is neither fit for land, nor yet for the dunghill. Wow. But a man cast it out. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. Let's go back to Proverbs. It says, what is a house built with? With wisdom and knowledge. Then Jesus comes and he says, if you do not hate your father, mother, and be completely devoted, you cannot be my disciple. What is Jesus saying here? He's saying we cannot serve him while we still love our family. That's not what he's saying because the next part he says, who of you sits down and starts building without counting the cost thereof? And this is what Jesus is talking about is being fully committed to him. Being fully committed and not being distracted by anything else around you. Because when you sit down to write a vision, you need to plan it. You need to see it. You need to see where you are going to go with your life. If you do not know where you are going, how can you ask someone else for directions? This is the thing about our lives is we try and figure out where we need to go through someone else's life. We're going to go back to that first verse again and again, because a house is built with wisdom, and it is established in knowledge. So the first part we have is the one that I'm sitting here. It is the desk of planning, of vision. Now, if you look at the stage, there are three different parts, actually four different parts. It is planning. It is equipment. It is supplies. And then you have your final piece, which is the construction. Everything in life has these stages. Everything that you want to accomplish in life has these four stages. First off, if you miss stage one, you get to stage two. You don't know what equipment you need in order to finish the job. When you want to go buy the supplies to build a building, you don't know what supplies you need because you didn't do the planning. You cannot remove the first step. Let's put it in a simple term in our spiritual life. You cannot remove Jesus and expect God to be your father. You cannot remove the foundation and expect the building to keep on standing. You cannot skip the first step. Hallelujah. So I want to take you to a piece. It says in John 10 verse 10. What does it say? You know what it says. I'm going to say the first part and it's going to pop up. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I want to bring that piece to your attention. Jesus came so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. That more abundantly stands out to me, especially in what I want to bring over today. Because if you are looking at supplies, if you're looking at the things that you need, God is giving you more than what you are needing in order to fulfill everything that you want to do. But the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. How many of you have ever been through some killing, stealing, and destruction? One, two, three. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. All right. They say 90% of you have experienced what it is to come into contact with a thief. 
It's not fun. So if I say, uh, let me do it this way. I can go on my knees for four days of my seven days in a week and pray half of those days through completely. And I go out. I can't make a thief disappear because they will be there. I cannot change the government because they keep on doing what they want to do. I can't remove the corruption out of this country because if it was able, it would have been done already because I believe there are so many people of God praying against these things. But why are these things still here? So I cannot remove the thief, but I can put myself in a different position. I can put myself in another place where I am not supplied by a thief. And I'm talking about being supplied by, <laughs> taking away. But I can be in a place where I'm supplied by God himself, by Jesus. Because he is the life. He says, I have come so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Can I get a whoop whoop? Let's get everyone awake. I know it's hot. More abundantly. All right, so let's go on to the second step. If we look at Exodus 35, 35, you find the story where God is giving Moses instructions to start building the temple. And that piece, he says, he has equipped the workmen for every work that they need to do. The guys doing the wet work, they were equipped to do that. So God equips you for what you need to do. You are equipped for the work that God needs you to do. Now, have that in mind and go to Colossians 2. Colossians 2, it says, For I would that you know this great conflict I have for you and for them at Laodicea, for as many as not seen my face in the flesh, that their hearts might be conformed, being knit together in love, and unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God, and of the Father and of Christ. That's beautiful in itself. And then he says, In whom are hid the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? A house is built by and established by? Okay, so here he says, In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge? It's in Christ. Hallelujah. And this I say, lest any man should beguile you with enticing words. For though I be absent in the flesh, yet I am with you in spirit, joying and beholding your order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. Now keep that in mind and let's just jump to Philippians 4 quick. So you have to understand that a house is built with wisdom and established with understanding. Now, I know that we can find a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge in this world, but that doesn't bring us far. Do you know that you can get wisdom without learning? You can get understanding by experiencing. So once you experience Jesus, you get an understanding of what he has given you. Once you step into his presence, you can receive wisdom from him. James tells us that if we need wisdom, we can just ask of God and he will give to us freely. But wisdom is one part. Once you get the wisdom of God, you have to experience him and get the understanding of him. Thank you, Father. Hmm. Okay, so Philippians 4, the well-known one, Philippians 4 verse 4, it says, what does it say? What does your rejoicing sound sounds like? Come. Oh, no one knows how to rejoice. Angus, rejoice for me. Ah. All right, all right. 
We need to have joy in the house. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Woo! Why? Because joy is your strength. What is a house that does not have joy? Have you ever been in a house that hasn't seen joy for like 20 years? Yeah, that's a sad place to be in. Imagine your life without joy. All right, and look at the faces. I know some of you haven't had joy for like ever, but imagine going through life without joy. That is not life. That is a burden. So your life is made for joy, and your strength is in that joy. So rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing. Church, be careful for nothing. Easier said than done. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, and whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, and whatsoever things are of a good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received, and heard and seen in me, do them, and the God of peace shall be with you. I just want you to take notes of this. Twice he says, the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your minds and hearts through Christ Jesus. Then he goes on, he says, all these things that are pure, true, and holy, think of these things, and the peace of God shall be with you. It says, actually, and the God of peace shall be with you. When will the God of peace be with you? When you change your mind and think on the things that is true, that is pure, that is holy. Why is that so important? (laughs) Because this is the place. The place where your thoughts are is the place that your life will manifest out of. You see, everything that's happening on the outside of your life is manifestations of things that's happening on the inside of you. Every one of you has had a Dimokar closet somewhere in your life. All right, let's move out of the closet. I'm going to make it personal. I'm just going to use myself as an example. This desk that you see here, is my actual desk. Now, I'm going to start off this year, and this desk is going to be clean. All my old papers are going to be thrown away. My pencils and pens are going to be full. I'm going to set it up so that I will be productive on this table. But one month, two months down the line, not even two months, (laughs) one month, (laughs) even less, when things start getting hectic, I don't clean my desk that often because I'm busy with so many things and my desk gets cluttered so my desk do get cluttered my mind do get occupied with things a lot of things but there comes a point where I walk into my office and I realize I can't work anymore I have to clean up my desk I can't think anymore I have so many things but I'm not I'm not functioning I'm not productive Because there's too many things on my mind. No, no, that's a a different ballgame. So every now and then, when I start seeing my desk is a mess, I know that my mind is a mess as well. And I need to condition. You know, no one can change your mind. No one can change your mind for you. I mean, I've tried changing people's minds. Hey, that's a dangerous path to walk in. Only you can change your mind, and that means only you can change the outcome of your life. I want, I want you to you think about this example that I'm giving to you and take this as a sign for yourself. When your house is a bit of a mess, realize that, hey, maybe your head is a bit of a mess as well. We all get messed up sometimes. (laughs) 
Luckily for us, luckily for us, there's a few steps, and we can always go back to the first step. All right. Let me sit down again. Let's carry on. Verse 10. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last care of, my hath, of me has flourished again, wherein we are also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of one, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. And verse 13, it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Notwithstanding, you have done well that you did communicate in my afflictions. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, and he carries on, verse 17, it says, not because I desire a gift, but I desire the fruit that may abound to your account. But I have all and abound. I am full, having received of Aphrodite the things which I have sent from, for, from you, an odor of sweet smell, a sacrifice acceptable, well-pleasing to God. Verse 19, it says, But my God, I thought you were going to like quote it now. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Yo. Do you understand that God will supply your needs according to His riches? Not according to your riches. I don't know how many times you have heard this scripture, but I want you to think about it today. God will supply your needs if you have a plan, if you have a vision, and when you need to go get supplies for your vision, God will supply all your needs according to His riches. Oh, in glory by Christ Jesus. Now unto God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Ah, this is beautiful. One, two things to pay attention to is, first of all, it says, the God of peace shall be with you when you think on the things, when you clear your mind and think on the things that is above and not on the things that's beneath. When you condition your mind to think on Him, He will be with you. It's not He will be with you. It's no, change your mind and He will be with you. Like so many people ask me, where is God? Where is God in my situation? But I want to ask you, where is your thoughts in that situation? You are the one that brought the situation in the first place. So how do you get God in your situation? The same way you brought the situation in. Think on these things and God will be with you. Ah, be careful for nothing, but in everything. Ha, ah, it's beautiful. Now let's go to Ephesians 2. I think it's this Hawaiian shirt that makes you all so quiet and relaxed. It's having an effect. Next week I'm having a short pants on as well. Pluckies. Ephesians 2. Are you there? Ephesians 2, it says, And you has he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in the times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that is now working in the children of disobedience, among, among whom we also had our conversations in time past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, say with me, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he has loved us even when we were dead in sins has he quickened us together with Christ by grace you are saved and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's just jump back to Colossians 2. Where is all wisdom and knowledge? 
hidden in him. So where are you seated now? In heavenly places, in Christ. So that means you have to realize that where you are, you have wisdom and knowledge. <sighs> mm. This is so beautiful. Where were we? Okay, verse 7. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches. So I want, I want you to understand that in the ages to come, when Ephesians 2 was written, he was talking about you right now. <laughs> because this is an age to come. It says, in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. For by grace you were saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship created in Christ unto good works, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. So I want to tell you that you were created for a purpose. You were created for God's work. From the beginning, it says you were created in Christ. So that means if you are created for God's work, he has created you in Christ. And if you are seated in Christ, that means you have all the knowledge and wisdom that is required. How do we access those things? Because I know that we don't always feel this way. Especially if our... Well, let's not go to children. Especially if your dog came into the house and he did something he shouldn't have done and you lose your temper. Uh, it's just me that loses tempers now and then. You guys look so holy. Uh. But God has ordained that we should walk in them. For you are his workmanship. That means God has created you for a purpose. Know that you are created for a purpose. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy 2. Oh, thank you, Jesus, for this rain. Yo, who's been enjoying the rain? 2 Timothy 2. So, you probably picked it up by now. The theme for this morning is construction and the whole process around it. From step one to step four. Now, 2 Timothy 2 verse 20, it says, But in a great house there are not many vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. And if a man therefore purge himself from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified and meet for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. So we are his workmanship, created for his work. Now it says that you will be prepared unto every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace, and with them that call on the, uh, the Lord out of a pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, <laughs> knowing that they do gender strives. But the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. And if God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledgement of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil, who are also taken captive by him at his will. Wow, that is crazy. So we are, we are the second part right now, is being equipped. He has prepared you unto every good work. That means he has equipped you to do all things. God knew what you need to do, and therefore he has equipped you. He has given you all that you need. Now in this natural state that we are in, if you do not have the right equipment, you cannot produce the right results. Now we are in South Africa in a Burmaka plan. Engelsman Stillum. 
Man, we, we can take a jigsaw and use it as a grinder if we want to. That's just how creative we are in South Africa. But you need the right equipment to do the right job. You cannot go into construction and not have the right equipment in order to produce the right results. So, if we are created to show forth His exceeding riches, that means you have to be equipped by Him with the right tools in order to show those things. That means God has given you everything that you need in order for you to show His goodness. 2022. What are we going to do? <laughs> We're going to show the world how good God is. By what? By being His express image. Mm. Let's go over to supplies. Thank you, Father. Isaiah 55, you know what it says. If you are hungry, if you are thirsty, come and buy. You know, supplies is probably the most important part of your construction. Can I say it like that? Supplies is the bricks, the tiles, the roof, the door. And if you, if you uh, how can I say it? If you cut corners on your supplies and you go to the cheap shops, it looks good for a moment. But after a while, the wear and tear steps in. And what happens? You have to replace that door. Yes, you can replace it cheap again, but I mean, for the price, they're just doing a great door by replacing them. It starts weighing out in the end. Because when you build, it will always be a long-term thing. You cannot build with a short-term mindset. You cannot build your life with a short-term mindset. You cannot go into your planning with a short-term mindset. I mean, we all love instant results. But it's not going to happen. You write down your vision, and then as you write it, it like appears next to you. It doesn't work like that. I wish it did, but, uh, like a 3D printer, like a vision printer. Imagine that. I need to develop that, a vision printer. <laughs> Unfortunately, it doesn't work like that because it has to go through the process. And you know what happens in the process? Things get scrapped. Ideas change. Mistakes are being made. There is rubbish being produced through your whole life. Through every step of the way that you go through, there's something called building rubble. Is that the word, building rubble? Waste. And whenever you unpack equipment, there is waste. Whenever you start building, if you go to a construction site, the waste sometimes makes the building not attractive. But then you come down a few months later and the garden is fixed and all the rubble is removed and you see the image and it's perfect. We have to take care of the rubbish in our life as well. Because so many times we start building on our vision, but we don't take care of the byproducts of what happens in our lives. We leave the things in our minds. That's why I'm going, you have to come back to the table every now and then. doesn't matter where you are. Are you already busy building, putting on the roof, whatever? Sometimes you need to come back to the first step, to the table. You need to come back and clean up the thoughts, the ideas. You need to take care of the things that weighs you down. How do you take care of them? You throw it away. If you don't throw it away, it's not going to go away. It's not like South Africa where they just leave the rubbish everywhere and think it's going to magically disappear one day. If you don't put it in a dustbin, it's not going to disappear. The same works in our minds. If we leave thoughts unattended to, it's not just going to disappear. Sooner or later, it's going to just, just come back up. <sighs> so I want to read you this uh, Isaiah 55 verse 10. It says, As the rain comes down, and as the snow from heaven returns not thither, but waters the earth and makes it forth and bud, that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goes forth out of my mouth. 
and it shall not return unto me void. And it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing wherein I sent it to. For you shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. And the mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorns shall come up the fir trees, and instead of the briars shall come up the myrtle tree. And it shall be to the Lord a name for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Hallelujah. And then I want to bring you Jeremiah 1. It says, I have called you by name. Before you were even formed in your mother's wombs, God called you. You cannot say it's because of my age or it's because I've been born there or it's because of this. You need to understand that God knew exactly who you are going to be today and what you need to do. Therefore, he has prepared you in Christ so that you have everything that you need. Hallelujah. Woo! And now the rain's coming. Are you still hearing me? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 3. I'm going to read from verse 1. It says, Do we begin again to commend ourselves, or need we, as some other epistles of condemnation, commendation to you or letters of commendation from you. You are a epistle written in our hearts, known and read of all men. For as much as you are manifestly declared by the epistle of Christ, ministered by us, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not in tables of stone, but in the fleshly tables of the heart. And such trust have we through Christ to God word. Not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God, who has also made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the Spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Woo! The Spirit gives life. The thief comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I have come so that you might have life and life more abundantly. Now we understand that the Spirit gives life. So Jesus is that Spirit inside of us because He is the giver of life. The letter is the giver of death. <laughs> All right, not funny. Just want to bring you back to verse 4. It says, And we have trust in, uh, through Christ to God's Word. Verse 5, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think any things of ourselves, but our sufficiency. What is sufficiency? Sufficient means you have enough in order to get the job done which is at hand. I'm sufficient. My supplies, I have all the supplies that I need in order to accomplish my vision. I have everything that I need in according to accomplish my plan, but my sufficiency is not out of myself. It is of God. Sure. Are you getting that? Are you getting that? All right. Now let's give in to from verse 7. But if the ministration of death, written and engraved in stones, was glorious, so that your children of Israel could not steadfastly behold the face of Moses, for the glory of his countenance, which glory was to be done away, how shall not the ministration of the Spirit be rather glorious? Ah, he carries on. Let's go on from verse 11. For if he, if that which is done away was glorious, much more that which remains is glorious. Seeing that we have such a hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished, but their minds were blinded until this day, and it remains the veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ, but even unto this day, whew, it is raining. Are you, are you hearing my voice? Whoa, that's loud. Hello, there we go. Nevertheless, 
When it shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now verse 17. Now the Lord is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all with an open face, beholding as in a glass the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Now we are changed into the image of God by the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit that brings liberty. So what is our purpose in life? Where does our vision and our goals need to bring us to? To a perfect image. If, if you look at this, this is a picture of a human being. This is a picture of your inside. Because every one of you has processes that you need to go through in order to get to where you need to be. You don't just stand up one morning and say, I'm going to be Superman and like come six o'clock in the afternoon, you're flying around like Superman. That's a weird example, I know. No one can be Superman. <sighs> Let's just start with a simple thing, just to be better than what you was yesterday. If that is your goal for today, and you stand up with that goal and you do nothing to better yourself, nothing is going to happen. So everything in life has to come through this process. You have to have the vision table. You have to have your equipment. You have to have the supplies. And in the end, what is the perfect image? This is something every one of you has in your home. An image of yourself. And you can look at yourself every morning and it's like, wow, damn, you're ugly. Or you can say, wow, man, you're looking good. You see, the purpose of our lives is to get to the point where when we start looking to ourselves, we no longer see the problems and the mistakes that I am, but we see the picture of Him. We move towards what He is. It says, <laughs> but we all with an open face beholding as into a glass the glory of the Lord are changed into the image from glory to glory. So what is the year, this word for this year? It is time to build. It is time to realize that everything on the outside is a manifestation of what is happening on the inside of you. Whatever you want to have manifested, see it, and you'll bring it into fulfillment. Ah, there's so much that I still want to bring over. Proverbs 23 verse seven, it says, as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. That means you are not, you are not just made and that is you. Jose, you cannot say this is me. You are who you, you make yourself. You are the product of your thoughts. What you put in is what you get out. What you build with is what will manifest. So let's just look at ourselves for a moment. If I have a plan, this is my life. I write down what I want to be in my life. I get my equipment, but my equipment is self-help books because there are so many. And my supplies is words and wisdom of other people. What's my end product gonna be? Other people. But when we understand that we have been fully equipped, fully supplied for every good work, and we look at ourselves, what do we see? We see Christ. Ah, Jesus. Thank you, Father. So, Colossians 2, let's just go back to that for a second. Thank you, Father.
We, we read in Colossians 2, and if we go over to Colossians 3, it says, If you then be risen with Christ, seek the things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God, and set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. And when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, ha, then you shall appear with Him in glory. How many times have you heard this scripture? And where, where, when do Christ appear? When and where? It's easy. It says in the beginning, set your affection on things above and not on things on the earth. When you change your mind and you think on things above, then when you start looking at yourself, it's no longer the problems Look, I'm telling you that through every process, there's going to be rubbish. Through everything in your life, there's going to be mistakes. There's going to be times where you have to make a mistake. But it's important to get rid of them and set your mind on things above. So that when you look at yourself, it's no longer the mistakes, but you see the, the image, the image of Him. And that is our purpose. That is what we have been built for. Oh. Okay, verse 12. It says, Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness, and our oh, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. And if any man has a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave, you also do you. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to which also you are called in one body, and be thankful, and let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your heart to the Lord. And whatsoever you do in word or in deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God. <laughs> and the Father by Him. Yo. So I want you to think about this. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then we shall also appear with Him in glory. Are we waiting for Christ to magically appear one day and then we're going to be like, ah, oh, yeah, there I am. Or are we going to look in the mirror and then I'm going to grow long hair and look like Jesus again? Jesus made me to look like me. But he made me in his image. So how do I see myself affects how I see other people. So you cannot be God to this world if you don't see God inside of you. See, if you look in the mirror and all you see is your problems, how are you going to show someone else God is love? This is what I'm saying to you this morning is that God loves you no matter what. He has equipped you and he has made you his workmanship. He has given you everything that you need in order to accomplish the goal that is at hand. What is that goal? It's kingdom. It's be him. So, yo, the rain stopped. Thank you, Jesus. 1 Corinthians 3. Are you still awake? I skipped a couple of things just to get to the punchline here at the end. So, whew, the rain was hectic. Hallelujah. And so are some faces. I love you guys. 1 Corinthians 3. Mm. We're going to read the old one. I think so. And I, brethren... Could not speak unto you as spiritually, but as carnal, and even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat. For here too ye were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. For you yet are carnal, but whereas there is among you envying, strife, and division, and are you not carnal, and walk as men, while one say, I am of Paul, and I am another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? but ministers by whom you believed. And as the Lord gave to every man, 
I have planted Apollos waters, but God gives the increase. Oh, let's go back to Philippians 4. And he shall supply your every need according to his riches. God is the one that gives the increase. So then, neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. Now he that plants and he that waters are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God, and you are God's husbandry. You are God's building, according to the grace of God which is given unto me as a wise master builder. I have laid the foundation, and another builds thereon. But let every man take heed how he builds thereupon. For, uh, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man builds upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, woods, hay, or stubble, hmm, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. This is why you don't take shortcuts in building your life. <laughs> you don't go to Chinatown <laughs> to buy bricks. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, verse 14. If any man's works abide which he has built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. And if any man's works shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. And how important this is. Even if the house is destroyed, he is saved because his foundation is Christ. Sometimes we, we build our lives. And yet at the bottom, there's a piece that is called a past or history or someone that has hurt you in some sense that you haven't dealt with. But when there comes a storm, when there comes a fire, and there is a piece in a building, or like a brick or something, or a part of the door that is not of good quality, and it creates a weak point, what happens is there is destruction. And why I'm saying that today is there has been destruction in most of our lives. There has been things that has caused damage in our lives. But I want to tell you this good news. If you have a foundation, get back to the table. Start. Know that everything has been supplied. Our sufficiency is of God. I do not need in order. All I need to do is get the vision and get the plan. And God brings the rest. I believe we are stepping into a time where we're going to see things being fulfilled. That we do not toil in order to get them done. This is why I'm saying bold. Don't let the government dictate you on what you're going to do this year. Don't, if you have an idea for a business, don't look at the government to see what the NCCC is going to do now and what level lockdown we're going to go into. If you have the vision started, don't be held back <laughs> by this world because he is the one that supplies it. He is the one that equips you. Let's pick up from verse 11. Wherefore, remember that you are being in times past Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh and made by hands, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, you are sometimes were far off or made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace who hath made both one and he has broken down the middle wall of petition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in the ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you which were far off, and to them that were not. For through him, we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now, therefore, wherefore, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, 
but you are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also builded together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Sure. And that's it. Go through this. Know that your thoughts are the preview of what is going to manifest in your life, whether good or bad. See, that's the thing. It's not if you only think good things, good things come. If you think good things, good things are going to come. If you think bad things, bad things are going to come. Because if God says His word cannot fall to the ground, that means if God's Spirit is in you, the words that you speak cannot fall to the ground. It has to accomplish. So I think we need to pay a lot more attention to when we sit down. Because the equipment and the supply part is no longer our needs. It's not something that we need to supply and equip. We have already been equipped and supplied. We are sufficient in all things through Christ's sufficiency. So that means there's a, a two steps of the progress that is not even our responsibility anymore. Only make sure that you have the vision where you want to be. And when you look at it, you see it. Even though you don't see it, you see it. I hope you're getting what I'm saying. Even if you don't see it, see it. So let us build this year. And why I'm saying build this year is, yo, we have had word in this house for many years. Every one of you has had word, you have had knowledge, you have had experiences, you have understanding. Now this morning, if you listen to what I said, you are fully supplied, you are fully equipped. What else are you waiting for? Are we waiting for lockdown to be lifted? Are we waiting for God to just speak again so we can just confirm for a thousandth time the word that he has given to us? Is it time to stand up and be who God called us to be, to understand that we are fully equipped, we are fully supplied? The word that I, I started off for this year is um, Jeremiah 29. It talks about, um, it brings them into a place, uh, but it's mixed with captivity. And he says the captivity there is going to be long. So build your houses, plant your gardens, pray for the peace of the place that you are in, because it shall be your peace. And then he carries on and says, but I know the plans that I have for you. And when I, got the message of build, that's the scripture I went to, but I was like, God, the context of it is so weird because it talks about captivity, but he says build. And I realized, but yes, if we look at what is around us, hey, this world is in a captive state. But for you, you're not going to feel it. Build. Don't hold back. Don't limit your life according to a regulation or a government or someone else's ideas. It's time to build. You have it. You have it in you. You have everything in you. Remember, there's processes. Clean out the rubbish. Don't let it lie around, because it's going to cause damage. <laughs> Please, don't build. You see, if you think things, you create materials with those things. Would you build your life on the thoughts that you have had for the last five days? But that's exactly what you are doing. As a man thinks, so easy. So your thoughts 
becomes your life. I, I think that's the easiest way I can say it.